Good evening and welcome to the Arab TV. This is Vic Zakur, your host for this evening. This is going to be shown on the middle of December. And December is the holidays season, so I'm glad that we are starting a wonderful show. And uh, it's going to be for the holidays. So first of all, happy holidays to everybody. That's including all the holidays everybody is celebrating, including Christmas, New Year's, whatever. Um, now, because of the holidays, we're going to start a pro I mean, our program tonight with uh, dance. And it's a folklore dance, specially designed by a Hala Dance Company. And after this dance, Hala is going to join us, and we're going to talk a little bit about the misconceptions of belly dancing and the Middle Eastern dancing, where it, what's happening with it, what's going on, all kinds of uh, nice subjects that I hope you'll enjoy. So. I'd like to get some music. I'm going to start our first dance, Habib Hayati. Very nice. 
And uh, that's a very nice. Okay, now that was that, that we shouldn't have played that one, but I would like now to introduce our star, Hala. Hala, come on and sit down here. Thank you very Th much. <laughs> thank you for coming. My pleasure. Um, so you know, we just had the the privilege of having your uh, troupe perform for I us. I know. I'm very proud of them. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and uh, you know, you were the teacher. So I, mean, I was going to say this, and you know, what I was going to say is this. Uh, this is Arabic TV. Of course, you expect to see programs like this in our show. But did you expect to see Japanese, Chinese, and Hispanic Mexicans being the dancers? I don't think so. But only in California we can do this. <laughs> so welcome, Hala. Thank you. And uh, so I want to just kind of like I'm so so excited that that you came and and this is the holiday, so we're going to make it a light program. But. Um, you've been teaching all over Northern California, folklore dancing, Middle Eastern dancing. People, yeah. Some people call also belly dancing. Um, yeah. So what get you started? What qualified you? How did you start doing that? Uh, well, I've always loved to dance. Uh, and as you know, in the Middle East... Sh uh, should I look over there? No, talk to me. Oh, okay. okay yeah. <laughs> um, in the Middle East, everybody dances socially. Yeah. Everybody dances at weddings and parties and birthdays. Uh, so I grew up dancing, and yeah. um, it's, it's always been a passion of mine. And then when I started to take it more seriously here and, and start taking classes, uh, I realized that there, there is a whole genre of the dance that is not ex exposed here in the West because it's what people do in their homes in, in, uh, in the Middle East and, and uh, in the privacy of their private events. So uh, when, when tourists go to the Middle East, they only see a, a tiny little sliver of the dance. They don't see the, bro the broad spectrum of it. Yeah. So uh, I decided to start teaching because I want to expose that it's, it's actually a folk dance. It's well, not just first you have to start learning then to teach. So how did you learn? Well, uh, that's, that's a good point. Uh, I actually started taking classes here. Okay. Uh, however, because I grew up dancing, um, I kind of progressed very fast. I, find, I found that I'm, you know, uh, I know the moves, uh, okay. but of course I had to learn um, the performance side because we all dance socially and there is a big difference between dancing socially in, you know, in a party yes. and performing. So um, right. I studied with lots of dance teachers uh, all over the Bay Area as well as all over the world. Every time a, t a guest teacher comes from Egypt okay. or, the, or anywhere else, I study with them. And then I started going to back to Egypt and studying in Egypt and then oh, I started wonderful. bringing bringing um, master teachers from Egypt coming to the uh -huh. U.S. to teach. I, I started hosting uh, yeah. like dance masters like Mahmoud Rada and Farida Fahmi and, and Atif Farag and Fatin Salama and, and like big name stars from Egypt wow. to come and teach here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, all of a sudden it just turned into a dance business <laughs> before I knew it. Okay, so, 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 okay, maybe you, I don't know if it's the right question for you or not, but just briefly, do you know what is the origin of this belly dancing or Middle Eastern dancing? Um, it's actually a big question. Uh, dance in the Middle East is, is such a, uh, an integral part of the common daily life. Nobody ever th you know, thinks about documenting how people dance or just like you wouldn't think of doc documenting how people walk or eat. It's just a, a very kind of, um, I don't want to say mundane, but it's, it's like an integral part of the daily life. So we don't really have any record showing where it started. However, uh, there are some studies that, that um, that hint that the movements uh, were actually existing in ancient Egypt. So they they found in some uh, in ancient temples and carvings that there 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 are dancers depicted uh, dancing, uh, doing the same movements that we do today, uh, even using the same instruments that we use today in the Middle East. So uh, it could be as far as you know ancient Egypt, you know probably uh, um, as far as the history of human so beings. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I mean even. Uh, what uh, King Solomon had dancers, right? Yeah, and of course there are lots of you know stories from um, you biblical know the stories and uh, biblical stories and, and that that uh, talk about dancers. So, yeah. in the, as I said, you know, dance in the Middle East is, is just like walking and breathing and eating. Right. So it's yeah. it's an integral part. And, of the and just before you came, I was saying where else but in California you have a Middle Eastern belly dancing group with members from China from. I Japan know. from <laughs> Mexico. It's so who are those uh, wonderful ladies there? Uh, this is Leticia. Hello, I'm Letitia, and I've been dancing with Hala since 2003. And? And, and I'm, I'm, Mex I'm Mexican-American. You're Mexican-American. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Isami. I'm from Japan. I've been dancing with Hala for two years. So what, what made you dance with Hala? Uh, I saw the berry dance about four or five years ago, and then 
it just gave me shock. Like it's just a beautiful dance, and I, I just have to try it. Does it help you, like uh, instead of exercising, you do belly dancing? Yes, very okay. much, and it's really fun. Okay, do you know any Arabic words? Mahaba. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next. I'm Diane, and I've been dancing with Hala for four years. Wow. I think more than that. Maybe uh, since 2002 uh, in September. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, ladies. Now, um, now, you know, in the Middle East, maybe the perceptions, I mean, I know a lot of people in the families, they, you know, their weddings and in their celebrations, even in their gatherings, everybody dances. Yeah. Um, but also there's another side of people's perceptions about dancing or misperceptions about dancing. Um, what are they and what do you think, you know, the difference between artistic, regular, nice dancing, than those per misperceptions? Um, well, unfortunately, the, the um, dance in the Middle East is, is kind of a, a very controversial subject because uh, people, like the general public in the Middle East, has this love-hate relationship. Like, um, there's no wedding complete without dancing. There's no festive event. Everybody, like, if you want to, to um, f celebrate some, something, everybody dances. However, there is this big... Um, wall between dancing socially and taking it up as a profession. Uh, if you take it up as, as a profession, there is, there is this big, con big misconception, unfortunately, um, that uh, either you're too poor or, or not, you know, you cannot use your mind to make money, so you have to use your body to make money, and, and it kind of puts you in a category of, um, uh, of kind of uh, a worker that's um, like the, the professional class looks, looks down upon it, like it's not worthy of respect or something like that. Yeah. Um, however, what they're missing <laughs> is, is the beauty of the art itself, uh, regardless of you know, the fact that you know, the dancer is, is earning her, her or his living that way. Um, there is, his? Yeah, there are, there are lots okay. of men dancers yeah, in, in, I in Egypt. Yeah, I just want to bring this up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, many of my teachers are men. <laughs> oh. um, uh, again, when, when, the, when they dance on stage, they, they dance in a very... Um, different way than... Can I come to your class? Of course. <laughs> I'd love, actually, I'm, I'm inviting all the men who are listening to join my troupe because we've always been trying to get more men yeah, in the troupe. I, I, I really have a belly, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey, that even works better. I know. Anyways, yeah, go ahead. So, um, so yeah, uh, everybody dances in the Middle East, as you probably know. Uh, however, on sta in stage performances, or if you go to watch dance, um, the most popular style is what we call Oriental dance, or Raks Sharki. Uh, and that's typically a solo uh, woman dancer performing uh, to a crowd of people. So that's, I think that's where the misconception mis uh, or um, uh, misreputation came from, because when you, um, when you dance, you're, you're wearing very fancy costume with, with beads and shiny stuff, and, and you're performing to entertain a crowd. Uh, and, uh, and taking up th that up as a profession in the Middle East is unfortunately uh, very looked down upon. Um, but, you know, I have yes. to say, if I didn't come to the US, I would, I would have never have been able to make Not that Egypt, yeah. transition. But you know what? Uh, Najwa Fuad, you know, um, one of the prominent, well-known uh, belly or Middle Eastern or Oriental, Oriental dancers, dancers yeah. um, she really uh, did something to the, to the art. What did she do? She danced for Kissinger, remember? Of course. And uh, that kind of like I think opened people's eyes to you know look, you know, it's not just what you think it is. It's art. There, there is a lot of dancers, uh, prominent dancers in Egypt and all over the Middle East who perform at very um, prestigious events because there is no event like there's no any any um, any high high uh, ranking visitor who goes to Egypt uh, goes to see a dance show. It's it's just part of the culture that we're all proud of. So. Uh, it's it's definitely um, something to be proud of and, and to respect and and um, and basically what I really want to emphasize is that it's amazingly enough you know it kind of came uh, full circle because now when people want to exercise there is like um, you hear in yeah. in exercise clubs and fitness centers the, the emphasis is on core uh, core fitness and and exercising from your core and all that is actually accessible to us from from doing this dance. It's, yeah, it's and you have <laughs> CDs now or DVDs or, or, or tapes of belly dancing exercises. As an exercise, exactly, yes, yeah. Yes. So not only is it a beautiful art, it's also a great exercise. Right. That and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, Europeans or American women now are enjoying it because it's fun to dance and also they keep their body in shape and, and they burn yeah. energies and they could go and eat more. It's <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a uh, yeah, it's a great workout. I mean, uh, not only um, in the West, but uh, you know, dance. The, this dance, this style of dance, which is uh, unfortunately misnomed, misnamed as belly, belly dance, it has nothing to do with the belly. <laughs> uh, but that's a different story. Look, we're not going to go into that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, this style of dance, which is Middle East Oriental dance, is popular all the way from Alaska to Russia to Australia to New Zealand to Korea to Japan. To, it's, it's like okay. all over the world. It's, okay. it's very. I'm going to ask you a question, and it just came to my mind. Of course. Um, there was a competition for belly dancers in Lebanon, I think, and there was young belly dancers, you know, or I'm going to, I call them belly dancers because that's what I'm used to. So Of course, yeah, me. no problem. <laughs> um, but then one of the uh, judges, she made a comment to one of the dancers, she said, you know, you really have a future, you dance very well, but need to put some more pounds on, some more weight on, <laughs> because huh. they think that the belly, like it has to have a more more fuller body, yeah. kind of figure. What do you think of that? Uh, I think that's also a misconception <laughs> because uh, dance, especially this style of dance, does not discriminate against the body type. You don't have to have any specific body type to dance. This is, as I said, it's a folk dance, it's yeah. a social dance. Everybody from, you know, if you go to a, f a party in the Middle East, from grandparents to grandchildren, they, they get up and dance. So it's not like, you know, for example, some Western style dancing requires a certain body measurements and a certain style of body. Right. Uh, Middle Eastern dance is completely free form. Uh, you can, you know, be overweight, you can be underweight, you can be average, you can be any. Uh, it's basically about celebrating your body and just kind of pr being proud of what you have and, and enjoying life okay. and, and yeah. enjoying your body and then then uh, you know I came to this country about what 25 to six years ago uh -huh. and uh, went to a few events where they had belly dancers at weddings or at clubs yeah and they were Americans and you know amazingly enough I mean I'm not saying anything against you know Middle Eastern belly dancers but they really I mean have mastered the, the art and they they have created new moves and you know yeah so yeah. so so it is, you know, getting uh, to be not only popular, but like everything else, when it comes to America, we improve on it. I mean, the pizza, Absolute, we do a better yeah. pizza, the whatever. So now we have a better belly dancing. <laughs> Uh, style from from the Americans. Did you notice that? Uh, well, uh, dance is a language, and and as any language, as as it kind of uh, spreads all over the world and and gets adopted by more cultures, is going to adapt and modify to the cultures that adopt it. And yeah. anybody can learn it. I mean, right. it, it doesn't require you know having okay. Middle Eastern blood in you. Anybody yeah. can take classes and learn it, and 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 then adds because the the dance really. Um, emphasizes, that's something I always emphasize in my classes, it emphasizes expressing your own unique personality. You don't have to, as you can see, um, the biggest contrast between Middle Eastern dance or belly dance and other styles is that you're always, uh, the dancers are always happy, they're always expressing joy and added, like there's this um, expressing feelings that you don't see, for example, in Western style or, or uh, dances or, or yeah. tango. So it's, it's always about expressing the inner joy and, and celebration and happiness. So uh, it's something that anybody can learn. And, and then once they express it from within, it expresses their own unique personality. Fantastic. It is. Actually, it's like exercise. You exercise, you, you know, you feel, you feel good better, and, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so I tell you what's going to happen now. We've got about a, one, or, one or two more minutes. We could talk a little bit more. Okay. Then there is a dance. We're going to you know, have another dance. Yeah, we have a for very our audience. beautiful dance. Then when that ends, you can come back here and we'll talk one more minute and it'll be the end of the show. Sure, I'll be more um, than happy to. And yeah. So, so uh, tell me, where do you teach? Uh, I teach actually all over South Bay. I teach uh, all the way from Stanford to San Jose. Uh, I have a... a a long list of classes. Anybody can go on the web and uh, check haladance.com. That's H-A-L-A dance.com. Haladance.com. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I have classes. I ha also teach private classes. I teach uh, group classes. And as you can see, we have a troupe that uh, we're always happy to add new members to, especially if they are, if they are um, interested in performing. Uh, we have also um, events. We, we host dance events every now and then, and, and we perform all over the Bay Area at, at cultural events and, festival, and festivals and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you've been very, very active doing that. Actually, I uh, want to thank you for doing something for the Arab uh, American Cultural Center. Oh, my Last pleasure. month, uh, yeah, we had a social. And it was kind of like, you know, uh, casual. Yeah. Uh, we had it at uh, one of the local restaurants in San Jose. Yeah. And there was some music and you danced and we had a lot of people. Everybody yeah, was very, yeah. very happy. I mean, it's just like a family exactly, gathering. Exactly, yeah. And it's always fun. I mean, dance is basically an expression of, of joy and celebration in the Middle East. So it's always, I'm always happy to, to share that and with you anybody. You don't even have to have a I mean, an occasion to celebrate. You could just dance for no You can celebrate no life. <laughs> yes. Okay, now we're going to start uh, the music in a little bit. Okay. And as soon as we start, then you know, we could maybe go and uh, to the stage and start doing a little dance. So, no head to dress, but that's okay.
This is the Egyptian folklore.
That's very nice. Hala, come back here. Don't go away. <laughs> yeah. And everybody come back and sit down here. It's okay. This is very nice. Now, now those are beautiful customs. Who made them? Where did you get them from or what? Uh, they're actually from Egypt. They're, oh, uh, they are? They're kind of a fancy version of the Arabic galabeya. Like, this is what people usually know, wear in their daily lives, except that it, it wouldn't be that shiny. <laughs> but it's called the galabeya, as you can see. Uh, it's just a long dress. And when people dance, they just t tie something around their hips and they dance. <laughs> so Fantastic. I got one more minute. Tell us if people want you to dance for them, you know, how to can they get a hold of you? Of course, I'll be more than happy to dance at any festive occasion. Uh, they can call me at um, the Hala Dance number, 408-246-1129. They can also reach us by email, uh, hala at haladance.com. That's fantastic. And, uh, we always, you know, welcome their feedback and opinions. And as I said, I teach classes. And fantastic. We'd love to see it. our performances sometime. <laughs> uh, great, we will. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, uh, our audience, and we hope I that you enjoy the holidays. Okay. There's a, a radio show that I host uh, the first Saturday of the month. It's okay. the Middle Eastern radio show okay. on 91.5 FM. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, happy holidays, everybody, and thank you for watching. And that was a present for you from the Arab American Cultural Center for the holidays. I will see you next year. Actually, next week will be my co-host, uh, Nathara, but I will be with you next year. So have happy new year, and thank you very much, everybody. Arab Television is brought to you by the Arab American Cultural Center of Silicon Valley and the following sponsors. Najat Badri of Napertac Inc., Joseph Lewis of Lewis Engineering, and Nathra Maula from Coldwell Banker. To sponsor our show, please call 408-279-2722.